Welcome to the Strawberry Greenhouses, located on the UNL's East Campus. My name is Dr. Ellen Paparozzi, and I'm a professor in the Department of Agronomy and Horticulture, and I am one of the lead investigators on research that is encompassed by the title, Strawberries in Winter. This project is to be an alternative form of agriculture for farmers as well as for greenhouse growers. Our research, which is often called controlled environment agriculture, focuses on trying to determine if it is cost effective to accomplish growing uh, strawberries in the greenhouse over the winter time. We're particularly interested in, in costs, startup costs, operation costs, and of course, what we can get for the product. We chose strawberries because of their multiple uses. In addition to being available all year round now as a fresh product, you can also use them frozen in ice cream. You can also use them in jams and jellies as well as possibly for fragrances and for oils. Now to do this, we have to have a team effort. And the first member of our team is Dr. George Meyer in the Biological Systems Engineering Department. And he and his group are responsible for all the sensors that you see in this greenhouse. We are sensing light. We are sensing temperature, temperature in the air as well as temperature on each of the leaves. We are also sensing the moisture in the pots. We want to be sure because we're using an innovative yet cost-effective method to water these pots. We want to be sure that they're at field capacity. Another member of the team is Dr. Vicki Schlegel in the Department of Food Science. She and her group will be responsible for looking at the total phenols, the antioxidants, as well as the flavor, particularly sugars, of these berries. You see, we, what you're going to be seeing here is a cultivar trial of 14 different color cultivars. Another member of our team is Mr. Stacy Adams, an assistant professor of practice in our department. He is our greenhouse expert. I'll be showing you some very innovative com combinations of greenhouse techniques in order to make this cost effective. Also, Dr. Paul Reed, who is our viticulturist and small fruit specialist, helps us with the selection and evaluation of the cultivars. There's also Professor Dave Lamb. He is our MBA, and he will be putting together the startup cost figures, as well as how much it will matter in terms of the numbers of turnovers so that we can de determine if you can make money growing strawberries in Nebraska in the winter time. Our setup is a low cost benching setup. It's a very simple thing that any handy person could do. It is made up of cinder blocks and benching fabric covered by a later layer of black plastic followed by a capillary mat, which is fed by an automatic fertigation system that comes on twice a day, based on a clock, for two minutes. There's minimal fertilizer used, and all irrigations so far have been very, um, very well controlled. In order to get maximum production out of our strawberries, we purchase Bombus impatiens otherwise known as little bumblebees. These are the same kind of bees that are used at um, tomato greenhouses, uh, cucumber greenhouses in the winter time. And these little bees are non-aggressive and we buy a box of bees oh, about once every six weeks. We think that the strawberries would probably pollinate themselves well as it is, but we want to ensure pollination and complete fruit set. Part of the energy conservation portion of this project is the double poly tubes underneath from the heat. Rather than having a heat tube overhead, we have 
Under each bench, we have a poly tube. Additionally, to the energy and the water conservation by using the capillary mat system, we are monitoring the plants and their transpiration. Again, to be sure that we are getting the maximal amount of light, the maximal amount of fertilizer to get the optimal number of berries per cultivar. We'll be looking at these cultivars to determine if we can get the biggest, the best, as well as the darkest colored berries. We also hope that Dr. Schlegel and her team in food science will have some good comparisons between what's going on in the grocery store and when we harvest our berries to be sure our antioxidant and sugar content matches the amount of sugars, et cetera, that you'll find in, uh, the, in your local grocery store. Now, this trial we have here is our full season trial. We started with a small three-month project looking at the same 13 cultivars. The only difference this time is we also have some organically grown cultivars in the trial. And the bottom line when we did this trial, we on these benches with this white plastic to add to the extra light, is that we, grew, we harvested over 1,800 berries, weighed each one individually, sent some to Dr. Schlegel for analysis, and we grew all of these with minimal heat and 38 gallons of water. So right now, we're in the process of harvesting berries. We hope to have a peak in berry production somewhere in the beginning to middle of December. One of the long-term goals that we hope is that strawberries grown in the winter time would be a supplemental income to farmers who don't want to leave the farm and would like control over their schedule from November to March. We feel that if we can get select cultivars that peak in December, then January and February, so a multiple cultivar situation, we could get the best return for the, for the dollar for strawberries. Last year, around between Christmas and February, uh, strawberries were going for $5.99 a pound. And a pound of strawberries can be as few as 12. So I hope to visit with you again, maybe in a year from now, when we have more results to share.